Okay, you saw the thumbnail. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go over it, and I'm going to tell you how historic sideboarding generally should work. Let me make sure I have all my categories. So blue, let's start out in the 0 to 1 area. There's really only one that we want to look at for seriousness. That's Pact Negation. All right, Pact Negation is the combo stopper. You have to get up to 5 mana to be able to use it. So Pact Negation is normally sideboard in, in with a combo so you're trying to pull off a combo you win the game this turn you need to hit your opponent now and they have that one particular spell that's going to stop you pact of negation is going to get you through so that's pact of negation sideboarding in two three copies in the sideboard if you're running combo if you're not running combo and you're running wishboard play style one to two max let's see what i want to talk about next dive down this is going to be your creature-based protection sort of deal. You might have some of these in the main deck, but getting some of these in the sideboard is going to be very valuable against heavy removal-based decks. Dive Down is a very useful card. You want to maybe go up to four of them in the main deck, so you're going to have some form of distribution, a couple in the main deck with your creatures, a couple in the sideboard, or maybe you just want one or two in the sideboard for a little variance. Next, let's see, let's see. Ooh, simple but good. Like, you can't you can't get past, like, the original unsummon. Pay one blue, send something back to the hand. I still think it's a completely viable sideboard to have, like, a one or two of. It costs one mana, and it it, it gives you an extra turn. I mean, we're, we're kind of in a, we're in a burn meta right now, so it'll be less valuable against stuff like uh, Vaishiro Pyromancer or... But it, it might be kind of good against Hasty Boys, maybe a Hazard or something. I still think Unsummon is a completely viable sideboard card. Going down to the next... Uh, we're almost done with the one drops. Spell Pierce. Ooh, Aether Spellbomb. Uh, Aether Spellbomb is also completely viable as well. Oh, two of these are right next to each other. So Spell Pierce is the primo get your spells off, counter the counter spell sort of deal. It works early, it costs one, it does the job. Swan Song is much less played because it gives your opponent a body, but it's a guaranteed counter for target enchantment, instant, or sorcery spell. Um, I never put it in a sideboard for some reason, but I feel like I should one day. I just haven't found the right deck to put it in the sideboard of. One day I will play with Swan Song. I think it's still completely viable. And with that, I think we're at... Okay, uh, Syncopate is also viable, but when you go... So let, let me let me compare Syncopate or Sinister Sabotage. So Syncopate exiles, but it costs X blue. Sinister Sabotage. Whoops. Sinister Sabotage costs three. You counter the spell, and you can decide if you want if you like the card off the top of your deck or if you want to send it to the graveyard. I think this is the best three-drop generic counter. I'm not going to say put this or syncopate in the main deck because if you have syncopate or sinister sabotage in your deck, you're probably going to be you're probably going to want to have it main deck and then have other options for sideboard. They're good general answers. Sin sinister sabotage is a great three mana answer. Anything syncopate is a good at least two mana answer something small or more mana answer something big. So I'm not going to put these type of counter spells in my in my sideboard gameplay style but they're still completely viable. So coming up next in the sideboard, we're, let's get into the two drops. Let's get into, uh, we're going to stick with the counter spells for blue. Essence Scatter, right here. Okay, Essence Scatter. Two mana, counter target creature spell. Uh, Gruul players, This you, 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 you sideboard then this in against Gruul, you sideboard it in against uh, Mono White. I think you do sideboard it in against red as well. I, no, I don't. I don't think so. I think you norm, need more reactive stuff against red. But there's there's quite a couple things you could sideboard it in against. I don't think the meta is favored in essence scatters direction right now, but I think it could be. Uh, could be completely viable. The same thing goes with the next card I want to talk about, uh, Frogify. You don't see this a whole lot, but if you do start to see like Ulamog decks like really really pop off, this could become very valuable. 
Um, I don't know what else. Maybe it uh, it answers a Thrag Tusk as well. It answers a Thrag Tusk. It answers an Ulamuk. It answers indestructibility, basically. Anything that says indestructible or generally has a form of recursion, this tends to answer it. It's not the best response. Maybe like a one or two in the sideboard at max. Uh, let's see. Lofty Denial. So this is specific. Uh, what is it specific to? Creature. Okay, so if you have a deck with flying, you're probably going to have four of these in the main deck. If you decide to have, like two in the main deck or three in the main deck. It's nice to have the extra fourth in the sideboard since it already has so much synergy with your deck. Very niche scenario, still a good card. Uh, Lofty Denial Merfolk. Merfolk, specifically Trickster. Um, it doesn't need to come from a mono blue list. You can mix two colors and still run Merfolk Trickster. If you're trying to keep a little bit of tempo, it keeps things going. If you're trying to control the board, maybe not so much. This is probably the worst sideboard card that I'm going to be mentioning today. I just, I personally think I, I, I like maintaining tempo, keeping a body on board, having something as a blocker later. That's something that I value. Uh, but it, you, maybe one or two in the sideboard. If you want to go really heavy into the creatures, you can go four into the sideboard. But again, that double blue, that, that's a hard mana cost. Next one is Negate. The old Negate. And now, if you're playing blue-white, you're going to be playing Dovin's Veto. However, this is our mono blue, uh, our mono blue sideboard color talk today. So you're going to sideboard in Negate, obviously, against those counter matchups. Maybe against a particular spell, like you don't want somebody pulling off uh, the uh, the bolus artifact and just winning the game out of nowhere. Like there's plenty of stuff you want to sideboard this in against. Two, three in the sideboard, de de depending how you feel. Like one's one's just fine. If you want one to get in the sideboard to like you know make your deck a little bit better against certain other types, that's fine. But if you're really suffering against those counter type decks. Three, four in the sideboard is going to be it, it, that's going to be a completely viable option. Um, this is the second worst card, the second worst sideboard card in this category, <sighs> because you want quenches in the main deck. You want quenches to handle those early game threats that you need to be able to handle. I wouldn't really sideboard it in. I would sideboard in more responsive stuff after they've hit the battlefield rather than before they've hit play. And it, it's just, it's a mana leak for two. It's fine. It does the job. Um, I wouldn't, it, I would have a play set of this against um, aggro decks if I had no aggro suppression in my main deck. But if I had aggro suppression in my main deck, I probably wouldn't bother with these. It's, it's, a, it's a nice honorable mention. Um... I want to talk about Ascanta. Ascanta is going to be at least a two or three of in the main deck. We, we, that, that's, that's just the most optimal. You don't want one. You don't want four. You want at least two. And if you want to see a little bit more often, you're going to want three in the main deck. However, some matchups you're not going to want to pull off. Against the, the control matchups, keep Ascanta. And don't, don't bother with it. But... If you're running, uh, if you're running white and you run rest in peace in the sideboard, this is an easy trade out. Trade out two, three search for his contas for two, three rest in pieces in the sideboard. Um, this is sort of the easiest card to take out of your deck. It does so much and it feels nice to have, but it's an it's a slot that you can replace for something a little less impactful but a little bit more responsive if you need to. I just wanted to talk about the uh, the viability of sideboarding out the Escanta. Uh, last two drop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tails and Tails. Tail, T-A. Do I not know how to spell? Okay, anyway, it should say counter target legendary something something. Just basically counter something legendary. It's very niche. It doesn't really work towards a whole lot. But y y you get what I mean. I may not know how to spell Tail. <laughs> oh, here we go. Tails in. T-A-L-E apostrophe S. Okay, counter target activated trigger ability or legendary spell. Counter target legendary spell is probably going to be where this leans to, but if there's a pesky triggered ability that you need to... If your opponent's trying to ultimate a planeswalker... Excuse me. Can you cast Tails in? Oh, that is smooth as butter. Like, you're going to feel really nice if they try to minus eight Nissa and you're like, nope, no mana for you. <laughs> very niche scenario, very fun to play with, but not entirely practical. Maybe one of in the sideboard. One of one fun of. 
Now we get into three drops. I want to talk a little bit about divination. So there, there, there's some uh, sideboard theory that divination should be sideboarded. Like you should have two copies of divination sideboarded in against the control matchups. You're paying three mana. You're not under any duress. You just need the value of the extra cards. There is a big argument for that. And I agree with it, but I, it's not exactly my type of... I will experiment with this type of playstyle going forward, and I, I, I do believe that it is correct. However, I just really like this particular... Uh, I, I just really like hieroglyphic, hieroglyphic, hieroglyphic uh, illuminations. Hieroglyphic illuminations. I just prefer to have to play this. There's so many more divination options out there. That they're mainly four cost spells that are instant that draw two cards and maybe do something else at some other time. But the the concept is the same, but the mana cost is increased. You're losing a little bit of value, or you're not going to be hitting the curve exactly. And since magic might be heading towards a more curve basis sort of system. These type of card effects are going to maybe increase in value. Honestly, we will see going forward. I'm still in. Uh, I'm still in three costs actually. So I talked about a little bit of divination. Let's talk about nimble obstructionist. I really want this card to be good. It's a three mana three one flash flying. All right, that text alone with a singular blue mana symbol in the cost. That's that's value right there. All right. Cycling to counter and activate or triggered abilities, so you're you maintain tempo and you counter something at the same time. That is so good. That is so good. I love this card. I want more of it, but I don't have any more. I have one rare, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go crazy. I want to make a collective company deck with this in it. That would that would be pretty fun. Um, but you sideboard this again, obviously against pesky triggered or activated abilities. It has it gives you such a nice body that you can just finish the game with. It's a really good card. Um, Mystical dispute, three to four of in the sideboard at least if you want to be dealing with those pesky counter decks and they're gonna sideboard three or four in against you that's just how it goes it's the one drop counter everything in a counter counter everything in a counter deck counter the counter like it's it, 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 that, that's how blue goes all right you just have to have to have more value than your opponent this is a, a, a one costed mana leak it's so good you know there's there's a big argument for this to be in a bunch of main decks but realistically this is probably the singular best blue sideboard card out of all so mystical dispute you win you get the best sideboard card out of all of mtga historic next one uh it was going to be talk about sinister sabotage syncope but i already talked about that let's go into four drops a little bit so there's probably a couple more options that i'm not i'm not mentioning but i'm really just mentioning like the most important blue drop uh blue counter or sorry blue sideboard cards that you're going to want for historic to keep these in mind let's talk about some six drops uh so when, if we get into six drop in the blue territory, like it's gonna need. Oh no, we're still in. We're still in four drop. Still in four drop. Ooh, geisty. Geisty, geisty. Words are hard. Dungeon Geist, you want to bring in, if you have a generally blue-based creature deck and you want to trade well, Dungeon Geist is what you bring in to like tap down their Thrag Tusk, or tap down their Uro, or tap down something, because you want to get in there for that damage, or you want them to stop hitting you for something. It's a nice card, one to two of, maybe one of, in the sideboard, in a blue creature-based sort of deck. Not, not a bad option. Not a bad option. Um, I talked about uh, Hieroglyphic Illumination right here, so let's actually look at the instant four drop spells there's actually quite a good number of them that i didn't put there's hieroglyphic illumination this is probably the best one because it does it twice i'm not going to do multicolors. bone to ash i want to experiment with a little bit more but i'm not going to go too crazy and then rewind i want to experiment with uh, with a little bit more um, but that's that's about it for the instance. I put Chemister's Insight and Hierographic Illuminations in the same category because they do generally the same things. The only difference is Hieroglyphic, hieroglyphic Illuminations is better against aggro and this is better against control because you can cycle this early and you can add more value late. 
that's the, that's the difference. If you if you truly want to know why you would sh why you should run Chemister's Insight above one or you know you can have three of these in the main deck, and if you're going against a counter deck, freaking sideboard them out, sideboard these in. Do that. That's that's actually a crazy amount of value. Freaking give that a shot. That's pretty nice. Let's get into uh, planeswalkers, planeswalkers, planeswalkers. So those are instant four drops. These are the planeswalkers, and there's really only two of them, not this one. So Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, is is just a draw engine. Um, if you run long, long games, you can play a Jace and just play the draw engine type of deck. The only other option for planeswalkers, really, out of all the blue, is Teferi, Master of Time, <sighs> against <sighs> Questing Beast. That that's that that's it. That's the only reason I would really bring in Teferi Master of Time is because Questing Beast surprises you so so so. I need to clear the board, make sure the board's clear. When I have a clear board, I play Teferi Master of Time. I plus up for a couple of turns, and whenever I see that Questing Beast, whenever I see that it's about to hit me in the frickin' face, minus three, take it out of existence. Doesn't even bother me. It's not the best sideboard card. It it adds a couple more options towards the mid game, but that's about it. It's uh it's it has a little bit of flexibility to it. Um, there was nothing in the so look at this so look at this with me. It you know post in the comments if I missed anything, but I don't see anything truly viable in this sideboard. Maybe this uh, Honden of seeing wins gets you a little bit more value. I there's an argument for that. There's an argument for patient rebuilding for uh, Mesmerines behind against those uh, green decks. You know keep things tapped, put some bodies on board. There's an argument for a bunch of things around here. But realistically, I couldn't put anything down. Um, maybe Thrix, if you wanted a little bit more flash ability. Same thing with this, if you wanted a little bit more flash ability. That's about it. But if you're coming, if you're coming to blue and you're looking for sideboard cards, it's really the six and the six drops that are going to do it. The number one sideboard card you can probably bring in against some matchups is going to be Rivers Rebuke. If I can find it, find it. It's similar to Flood of Tears. I'll 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 do a comparison with Flood. Okay, so return all non-land permanents. Target players controls their, a one-sided board wipe for six. What is this? Flood of Tears is generally the same thing. Return all non-land permanents in the same. If you return four or more non-token permanents, you control this way. You may put a permanent card from your hand on the library. I don't like Flood of Tears because I like having my permanents. I don't want to spend extra mana to replay my permanents. Okay two, three copies of Rivers Rebuke to bring in from sideboard against uh, a board base deck. That's going to be smooth as butter, brother. All right. Uh, that's going to, it's, it's going to be a good day. Um, what else do I want to talk? Commence the, oh, so actually no, Sublime Epiphany. <sighs> I really like this card. It's just a really good cryptic command. It does a whole lot of stuff, and I like it. It it counters triggered abilities. It returns stuff back to the hand. It creates a token of a body. What is that line of text? I can't tell you how many times I've won a game out of creating a token out of a body. That is such a good line of text right there. Sublime Infinity, uh, Sublime Epiphany needs more credit than it. It it it. it it, it, it needs more fame than it deserves, honestly. Um, not going into multicolors, and I wanted to talk about one more. What was it? Sublime Epiphany Runa commence the end game. Eh. Your general can't be countered. Make a body draw cards. You bring it in against counter matchups. It's not a terrible card. Can't be countered. Draws cards. Makes a body. What more could you ask for in a counter matchup? Um, and you control enchant permanent, enchant permanent, legendary. Yeah, there's a couple discontinuity is pretty cool. There, there's a couple options, and then last but not least, let's end it off with the old seven drop. And I only found one seven drop that I like, that I think belongs. You know, there it would be agent of treachery. It would be agent of treachery, but it's not. It's not agent of treachery. It's not nexus of fate. It might actually be Nizal. I didn't think of that. So, yes, Nizal sounds like a great card to bring in against a counter deck. Oh, that's such a good card. Okay. Um, <laughs> but what I was really wanting to talk about was Kiora Beset the Sea God in the 7 slot. Uh, it creates a body. It taps all your opponent's stuff. Um, and you gain control of something. It adds a lot of value. It does a lot of nice things. I have not worked it out successfully. I've, si I've put one or two copies of this in the sideboard a lot. And it has never paid off. 
It is not a good option, but it is the funnest of the options. Realistically, Neza Hall Primal Tide is going to be where you're going to want to be at. <laughs> it, it it costs seven, but like you draw a lot of cards, you discard cards. He does some stuff like it 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 works good. Um, aside from that, you know. Uh, what else is there? I mean, there's Agent of Treachery, there's Commit, but you're going to have a Commit in the main deck if you're really going to be that kind of player. Or, you know, you okay, I'll give it to that. You can have a Commit in the sideboard as well. Uh, that is it for this video. Hope you liked what I talk about. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to hear about. I, sh I, I think I'm going to do a sideboard video for each of the colors, actually. Have a good day.